Thing. Welcome, this is Stephen Reed of Microsoft uh, looking at Redstone tonight with Minecraft. Now, can you see, why can't I get into Minecraft now? All oh, the best laid plans. If you can see, if you can see Minecraft. I'm actually using the web app tonight, which I don't normally use, and so maybe that's causing a few issues for me. I can see someone's chatting to me. I actually can't for some reason get back into Teams. Maybe I have too much open. I'll open that up. You can, you can see Minecraft, right? Uh, well, you can't now, I don't think. There we are, you can see Minecraft now. Okay, so let me show you a bit about um, what, I, I'll start the call and we've only got about maybe 30 minutes in total to, to run through this. But let me start the call by showing you some of the ways that Minecraft is currently, or, or sorry, Minecraft worlds that I have that currently use Redstone. Then I'll give you a basic Redstone, then we'll create a lesson in Redstone. Um, and I'm just going to go through some of these worlds and see which ones we can find with Redstone in them. I have so many worlds. So this is crazy. Um, I need to find a good one with good redstone in it, though. There is a Vikings 3D printers. Goodness, we've got, I, can't, I forget half of this. Yeah, OK, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to look for the hydro. There it is, renewable energy world. OK, so this is quite complex and and some of you may have already seen this because I have showcased this on things before but when I say complex all I mean is you're going to see a great use of redstone that makes it relevant makes it meaningful and so this first that I'm showing you is actually a renewable energy world we want to talk to our children about difficult subjects that are that are difficult to grasp like the 400 million year creation of fossil fuels and then how those fossil fuels are then burned to create uh, energy and actually we could be doing it using hydro or tidal or whatever and so what i'm going to do is you'll see here that um, this is not this is technically super advanced which we're not going to do but i want to show you down here we've got tidal waves so the water comes in and the water comes out on the beach and then inside this machine here inside this room here we have a machine that generates electricity and lights up this bulb when there's enough energy. It's basically a giant battery which uses um, wave power. Now, that's not essential. I mean, it is redstone, but essentially it's it's a bit more complex than that. Whereas this one, which is the hydroelectric power dam, this is a really nice way of helping children to grasp the concept of hydropower. In other words, how do we teach children without building a dam or shoving them on a bus and taking them to a dam about the, the, the principles of this. Now, there's lots of different physical ways we can do this with little polystyrene cups and all sorts. And we do build that in. But with redstone, we can actually bring it to life in Minecraft. So children build this. We got them to create the principles in Lego first. And then we move from Lego over to Minecraft. And so we have, the, the so here's what the children have understood. There has to be varying degrees of water. So you have your reservoir at this height, topographically, and then you have the continuation of the river at this height. This is the natural height, some would say. And we need a valley. So we need hills on one side and we need hills on the other because you need a valley to create uh, a, a reservoir. And then, so we're doing a bit of geography and a bit of science at the same time. And then what happens is we've built the dam. So the kids then understand that there's this giant dam in the middle that has, I mean, we can do mathematics around foot pressure. So it needs to be X number of blocks wide depending on the height and therefore the pressure of the water. And we can do all sorts of maths around that. But the main thing is you'll see that here are four gates. And these gates, are not they don't have water coming out of them at the moment, because what we're pretending at the moment is that we don't have a high enough water pressure. Our water is currently sitting at three metres or whatever. Now, Minecraft doesn't have great water mechanics. I'll admit that. The water is static. It will never change height. I can't make it change height. And so... What we're going to do is we have to then fake this. We have to we have to test the children's understanding by getting them to build the principles of what we're trying, talking about. And so what my kids did was they said when these gates open and water flows out, it means that we have high enough, deep enough water. And if we have high enough, deep enough water, we have 
high pressure. And if we have high pressure, we can turn turbines. And if we can turn turbines underneath the dam, we can make electricity. So I said, good, I get the concept. Go show me what you're talking about. So they did. And so here's what they did. Inside here and behind here, they made a lever. And redstone is an electrical circuit, which I'll do. Uh, actually, I need to keep them open. I'll show you this uh, in a second, um, the basics. But what I'm going to do right away is I am going to make that there. Now, what that means is that this lever is currently switched off. If I switch it on, and I'll show you outside what that looks like. If I switch on, I'm going to hide that. I can see that now. If I put a lever here, off, uh, on, off, on, off, on, off. It's pretty straightforward. It's a toggle. If I then get a lamp and I do that there, on, oops, on, off, on, off, on, off. It doesn't work because there's nothing joining it. If I take redstone and I create a join, which we're going to do, uh, together later and there's a way of doing it. When we switch it this time, you'll see we can switch it on. So what we end up with is like an electrical current. That's what redstone ultimately is. So what my kids have done is they've created an electrical system which goes down underneath the dam. We're gonna follow the electricity and then it creates gateways. Now we don't need, it looks complex. I'm only showing you this as an example of what children can do. But if I switch this on now, we go outside you'll see that there's now overspill. That's the signal that we have high water pressure. When that water pressure is high enough, we can turn turbines. And if I now head out to the back of the dam and look to see what's coming out of the back of the dam, we have a light bulb that's switched on. It's a generator inside there. You know, you go, I don't know if you've ever been to a hydro dam, but you have these big massive generators which generate the electricity from the, uh, from the turbines. So they modeled that, it doesn't really work but it looks like it does because it's a redstone concept. Now, here's the other thing they did, just to, just to make it even more clever, is they then decided that they weren't gonna, whoops, they weren't gonna do it just using redstone. They had no interest in just using redstone. What they wanted to do was they wanted to use the weather because they are, one of the kids came to me and he said, but sir, like you don't just switch water on for what, and I said, well, the guys in the dam do. The guys in the dam, you know, the engineers that are there, they know that they can pull this particular lever, which then opens up this tunnel, which allows water to flow to create the pressure for the, tur uh, the, the, the turning of the turbine. But actually, the kid was right, right? He, the, the student was right. He said to me, you don't just switch a button and get water pressure, not in nature anyway. And so he was right. So what he did was, I'm just going to get a redstone. Now, these were 12 and 13 year old children that were working on this with me. Um, although the Lego one was built by students who were five and six when we originally did this, like literally five and six year olds. And then what they did was they built this crazy thing. And all this does is this detects, this is a daylight sensor and then you can switch it to nighttime or so you'll notice if I do that, it goes blue. If I do that, it goes red. And so what we can do is we can, this one detects when it gets dark. Now we know in Minecraft that it gets slightly darker when it rains. So here's the thing. If we go outside and there's not been rainfall for a while, we don't have enough water pressure. But if it rains, oops, weather, oops, I need to make this a command. So I'm just gonna make it weather rain. If I make it rain, you'll see that it starts to rain outside. And when I go inside, what's happened is a cauldron has appeared. This is a clone command using a piece of Java code. If, it's just an if statement. If rain, then put cauldron here. Now what happens is that cauldron will slowly fill up with water. This is our actual reservoir. This is the model for the reservoir outside. If I hurriedly, fit, now you'll notice that it's still closed because there's not enough water in there yet. So even though it's been raining, it's maybe going to take a few days of rain to do this. And so they just leave it. I'm going to speed it up for the purposes of this lesson. I'm just going to fill that up with water. And now when I go outside, 
we have enough water. It's been raining enough, it's filled up the cauldron, ergo, it's filled up the reservoir, and we've ended up with the water. So when people say to me, I literally have had teachers say to me, so what does so what redstone, like, what does redstone do in a class, classroom? You know, really, what can I do with redstone? And I say, actually, if you know the principles of redstone, which I'm going to teach you now, there's nothing you can't model, certainly not from an engineering STEM science uh, perspective. And so let's do some of that together. If you have Minecraft open, we are going to do this together. And yes, Maria Petresca has said, this is amazing for virtual field trips students can take now. Um, we've been using it this way for 10 years. We've been using it for history field trips where we want to go and take children to see a monument or we want them to go and see a ruin. And there's just not, the, there's not the health and safety. Uh, there's not the money. There's not the, the buses available. Like there's some reason why we can't do it, usually money. And, um, and so we do it in Minecraft instead. We literally, we have a project called Crafting the Past, which you can get at, uh, I'm just going to type it in, Crafting the Past co.uk and if you check out craftingthepast.co.uk we literally built Scotland's past because we couldn't take children to see to see any of it um, for example the islands of St Kilda you're not allowed to go there it's a, it's a UNESCO world heritage site and it's protected you can only get there by helicopter by appointment we can't take kids there but we can in Minecraft so we built them one-to-one -one scale so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new world and we're going to show you how to do this together. So first things first, if you're in Minecraft Education Edition and you're on the very front page, we're gonna click play. Then we're gonna click create new and the new button. And then we're gonna call this world, always, always, always name, name your worlds. We're gonna call this Redstone Q. And then we're gonna make this creative in default game mode. We're going to keep it at peaceful because we don't want mobs and monsters. And we're going to skip down to world type and we're going to make this flat. For a redstone world, we only need a flat world. This is just to show and demo. I'm also going to go further down and I'm going to say always day because I, I don't want the sun to go down. I'm going to open up show classroom settings and I'm going to go to uh, perfect weather. Um, I live in Scotland. Perfect weather is something we know nothing about. So to have a toggle is a wonderful thing. Now, I'm then going to click on view. Uh, sorry, we did that. I did that wrong. Sorry, creative new. I've got that wrong. Uh, redstone. Let me just quickly catch up with myself. Redstone. View. Creative. Peaceful. Flat. Always day. Show classroom settings. Perfect weather. Done. Play. Okay, now, uh, oops, I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to switch mobs off. Show classroom settings, allow mobs. That gets rid of all the chickens and stuff, although we are going to need them back in a while. So first things first, you have nine slots at the bottom of your screen. If I go into my inventory, you'll see you have nine slots at the bottom. This is perfect for teaching redstone because what I want you to do is look for redstone. Now there's lots of different things. You're going to press to, to get into your in, excuse me, to get into your inventory, you press E for um, excellent. <laughs> and then you type, you, you click on the search bar, which is the little uh, magnifying glass, and then you type redstone. Now you'll get lots of different things like lead, redstone repeaters and comparators and stuff. That's all for later. At the moment, you just want redstone and you're going to take that redstone and you're going to put it in the middle slot. Because what we're about to do is show you the easiest way to remember how to use redstone. People all the time I have teachers saying to me, oh, I looked at redstone and it was I just couldn't get my head around it. This is where to start. Input, process, output. That's all redstone is. So now what we need to do is look for some inputs and the types of inputs because redstone is the process. Um, we look, need to look for inputs. So we're going to look for a lever, which I showed you earlier, and we're going to put that in slot one. Then we're going to look for a button, and we're going to put that in slot two. And then we're going to look for a pressure plate, and we're going to put that in slot three. 
Now, beyond this training, you might be thinking, well, are there more inputs? Um, I, yes, and there are definitely, definitely more outputs. I'm only going to show you three, but playing around with uh, Minecraft, asking your students to help you with Minecraft and going online and checking out red, uh, a redstone, um, you'll find lots of ways of, of learning how to use it. But for the purposes of tonight, and we've got about 20, 15, 20 minutes left, we're going to do levers, buttons and pressure plates. Then what we're going to do is the outputs. So you'll notice I put the inputs in slot one, two and three, gap, redstone as our process, gap, and then we're going to put in and we're going to look for a lamp and a lamp in slot seven. We're going to put a door and I'm going to take an iron door in slot eight and I'm going to take a piston. We're going to put in a sticky piston in slot nine. So three inputs, a gap, redstone as a process, a gap, three outputs. That is it. Now, let me show you how to lay this out for the, for the easiest way of learning it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a lever right in front of us. Then we're going to go sideways, leave a gap, button. Sideways, leave a gap, pressure plate. Now, as I showed you before, the lever is a toggle, doesn't do anything. The button you press and then it depresses after a second. And the pressure plate you have to stand on. So these are three unique inputs. What we're then going to do is we're going to take, we're going to face this way and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And on the sixth, we're going to place a lamp directly opposite the lever. Which means if we turn this way, we can leave a gap and put a door and leave a gap and put a piston. Now, here's the thing to remember, a little hint about pistons if you're doing this with me and I know I have to move at a certain pace, so bear with me on that. But if you place a piston, it will always be placed in the direction that you are facing. So if you want a piston to go this way, then you have to place it facing it like that. If you want it to go the other way, you do that instead and you end up with pistons facing each other. So if you want to do what I did with the piston, I'm just getting rid of those ones. If you want to get do this, you're going to have to fly, which is double tap space and then look down and then you can place your pistons facing up the way. So what we've now got is a lamp with a lever, a door with a button and a piston with a pressure plate. But none of them do anything because there's no process. There's no electrical currents. So what we're now going to do, just like I did before on the on the dam, is we're going to build the network between them. So now, I can toggle the lamp, I can open the door, and it automatically closes, and I can stand to raise the piston. It's responsive to whether or not I'm standing on it, and we can toggle the lamp. That is the most basic way of, of grasping, teaching redstone. So that is a really nice way of just build it, keep it, remember it, call it your redstone world, always refer to it if you get stuck. But here's the beauty of redstone. What we could do is we could take the last redstone away and then join these gaps. And then we could choose, I'm gonna do the piston. Now what you've got, is three inputs all linked to one output, just using redstone. So we can toggle, we can button, and we can pressure plate. Input doesn't affect input, it just affects outputs. So that's all we're doing. These are just deadlines coming from another output. We can use the button, and we can use the toggle. We could do the same with the Lamp. So if I stand on here, if I press this, or if I toggle. So, and I'm going to show you a little light exercise we can do. So we can do that. The other way we can do it is, you're probably already thinking about it, is we can open three all at once. So we can use one input for multiple outputs or one button, or one pressure plate. 
The redstone can go in any direction. It can, it will, it will join up on itself and that's where it gets a little bit complicated, but we could still put our pressure plate there and we could still have our bulb there and it will still light up. That's now lighting everything. That's now doing everything, including this one over here. What you can also keep in mind is if we have a lever here, it doesn't matter which way the lever is facing, you'll notice this lever is toggling front and back. I just happen to place it that way. We can have the redstone whoops, coming out of it. Now I'm just going to run redstone all the way down here. And then at the very end, I'm going to stick a lamp. Now watch what happens. When I switch that on, you'll see that it gradually fades until eventually pop, it stops and the lamp doesn't work because that there is our dead spot. It has a charge. Like everything else, you need a, you know, you need a booster. If you start using three mile cables to try and get your internet, you're going to lose internet. And so we, it works in much the same way. And what you need to do to get around that is you need a thing called a uh, redstone repeater. Red, it's basically a booster. So you take a redstone repeater and then facing the direction of the current, the, the, the travel, of uh, the redstone, you get rid of the last, the, the first dead one, and you just replace it, and it creates a new signal to the lamp. And now, and the further you go, you get a slight delay. You'll see click, 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 click. There's a slight delay. So, how could we use something like this for a very, very basic lesson? Let me show you something. I'm going to show you an example of a communication lesson. And then I'm also going to show you an example of a biology lesson using a whole bunch of components. Um, I actually have another live stream that I need to do sh um, shortly. So I, it's why, otherwise I would talk about this all night, but I, I, I do need to keep an eye on time on this one tonight. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pop down a lever here. Now, here's the thing. If you are, I'm just going to do a little one there. I'm just building a, a structure that looks like this. Station one. So you're a student and you've been asked to create a Morse code message and pass it down the line. Student two has another one. Uh, where would that be? That would be an alignment there. So student two, which is maybe here. Uh, and I think it was, yep, yeah, that was where the lamp was. And we're going to do that. And here's the thing. If we keep them in alignment, I actually did them in a big tunnel when I did this, so they couldn't see past. But if we run redstone down the stairs, we pop it there. So student one does the following. Student one, uh, and I'm actually just going to show you that this is working above. I'm just going to have a little lamp here so that you know that that one is doing what this one is doing. This is hard to look up there. But what we're going to do is now I want to pass my message on. So I'm going to go dot, dot, dash, dash, dot, dash, dash, dot. The other child, if I just switch this one on permanently so you can see, student number two is seeing that and then thinks, right, I know what that is. And then they, they work it out and then they go dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, <laughs> dash. And they pat it on until eventually 10 stations later, you may or may not have the same message. We did this in Ireland um, uh, to replicate a very real scenario in which um, I, the Irish and the British were in conflict during what was called the Easter Rising and the Irish found themselves trapped inside the post office in uh, Dublin. And what they did was they sent Morse code to the Americans to see if the Americans could help to intervene um, politically. And for some reason, and I, I'm sure the history is, is deep on this, but for some reason, the Americans didn't respond. And people had said that they didn't know if they got the message correctly because it had been passed through several relays. So, 
Whether or not that's true historically, I don't know, but this was part of the classroom history uh, session that we did, was looking at the Easter Rising and that, that very basic communication that could have saved people's lives. It turns out it didn't, and the British went in and, and, um, and stopped the Irish, shall we say. And so, um, and so we, we now look at that as a historical thing to study in schools. But how can we make it practical? Well, we use Redstone to do Morse code and communications in schools. It's really, really basic. Um, so uh, I'm dipping in and out of the, the chat while I'm doing this. There's a question from um, Cheryl. Uh, is Minecraft available on Chromebooks now? Is there a cost? It is available on Chromebooks, yes. Um, however, it is Minecraft Education Edition does cost, and it costs in one of two ways. You either have to purchase it uh, five, I think it's five dollars per student per year uh, if you don't have an A3 Office 365 license in your school. If you have an Office 365 license in your school, you automatically have access to it. So it doesn't cost you it, or your school necessarily, it costs the Office 365 purchase as part of that larger purchase. So either way, there's a cost. So we never ever talk about Education Edition being free, but we do talk about it being free to teachers depending on how they access it. Um, and it is available on Chromebooks. It's actually in beta on Chromebooks at the moment. So you go to the uh, Play Store, you download it from there. I have it on a Chromebook um, and, it, and, it, and it, so far it seems to be working well. So let me show you one more thing before we depart. And I'll do questions and answers at the end, but I'm just going to show you one thing that some 11 year old girls did for me in Turkey. Um, I was in Turkey, I was working with some schools and one of the science teachers challenged me and said, I, I am studying, he, he said, he said my, my, my students are studying uh, biology. And he said, and I will take Minecraft and I will use it in my classroom if you bring my students in here right now, <laughs> They're in room 571 or whatever. Bring them in here right now, he said, and we'll we'll have them build something if you're so sure it works. And I, that was a challenge. That put me right on the spot. <laughs> I'd rather people, well, actually it worked. So I, maybe I wouldn't rather people didn't do it, but it was a tough situation because I was like, oh, I have to assume these kids play Minecraft and know what they're talking about. Now most kids invariably do. And this is what they did. When they brought them in, all I said to the kids was, what are you studying? Oh, we're doing biology. Right. What are you studying in biology? Human systems, they said. And I said, OK, what kind of human systems? And they were like, well, you know, the nervous system, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the excretory system. I said, great. Using Minecraft, you have one hour to model for me something that you've learned, a working redstone model that shows me what you've learned. And they came back after 19 minutes and said, we're done. And this is what they built. Let me just get the materials. Uh, and we'll do this uh, one piece at a time. So this is what they built. We started with a little glass structure here. Um, did I get that right? Oh, it doesn't really matter, but my uh, OCD kicks in if I don't get it right. There we are. And I'll just close that off there just now. Okay. Then they dug a hole. And then they got some rails. Now, these are all uh, other things that you can learn um, with Minecraft. And I am, I'm going to tell you at the end of this stream about our, our Microsoft live streams that you can join in on. Um, now here, they also got, I need power rails, I need detector rail, I don't need the glass anymore. I'm going to get myself a dispenser. I'm going to get myself some water. This is all things that the students did in their uh, bed to show me Whoops, show me what they've done. 19 minutes it took them. I can only build it in 19 minutes because I know what they did. Then we're gonna put that there and we're gonna put that there, okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to get some, doing that, forget the last letter. There we go, redstone blocks. Now redstone blocks are just a permanent source of power. They're like batteries. So what I do is I just use them to power rails so we'll just do a few of them there we are we'll do a power rail power rail power rail and then we'll join these were 11 year old five, uh, five 11 year old girls then what i'm going to do is i'm going to get myself some they made it out of brown wool that's fine Oops. 
Um, that'll do. That looks like what I want it to look like. And then they did um, that. Here we are. Uh, then they got some redstone. And I know that they got redstone lamps. Uh, no, they just got redstone repeaters. Where's the redstone? There we are, redstone repeaters. Now, all of this has part has something to do with the human body, so bear with me and I'll tell you what that is. And they just ran it all the way down here to there. And then they pulled this lever. Oh yeah, they need a lever. Now, we happen to know that's too long because I've already showed you that. And so what I'm going to do is, this was actually quite handy because they put the levers in and then the great, they, they put redstone repeaters in. And they did that every second block. And they extended these pieces here. The wider apart they are, the more a delay in sending the signal to the next space. So they did that. And then the last thing they did was they got a called a, a, a minecart and they put the minecart there making sure I put water in there yeah okay it's finished 19 minutes they came back to me and said we're done I said oh great show me and they said well bedstone is blood and it gets carried around it looks like blood and it gets carried around the body and it, but it doesn't just get carried around the body, it gets pumped around the body. So these redstone repeaters are heartbeats. That little delay is the pump, 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 pump of the blood being pumped around the body, the beating heart. The blood carries toxins from our food um, and uh, you know, caffeine or, or sulfates from food and so on. And what that happens is that goes to your kidney. Your kidney then processes those sulfates and and caffeine or whatever else and it puts so there's our caffeine we're going to do a little bit of that and we're going to do one of those that's three things that are in our blood that we need to get out of in our excretory process because of course if you tell kids if you give kids an option they're going to go for the excretory system right i know i will that is then passed down into the uterine system where it goes to the bladder and then we go to the toilet which is here and that's where it exits the body so the bladder fills up with water and then exits the body. So one more time, blood pumped around the, cyst, uh, the body, carrying sulfates to the kidney, where the sulfates are then packaged up. They're sent down the urinary tract to the bladder, and then they're released from the bladder and the continuation of that urinary tract outside the body. And when I press this button, that is exactly what's going to happen. So check this out. Blood, heartbeats slow kidney toxins done water and then we go to the toilet 19 minutes and the teacher the biology teacher was just like i'll take it <laughs> i'll take it because to be able to put that into writing for children you, you're all teachers watching this that's a that's a difficult thing even if you've learned the concept how do you pop that into writing so if you can model it, then you can write it down. Nobody's saying don't you know, stop our children writing, but let's have our children model for us in a language they understand, in a system that they understand with tools that they play with every day. Let's take what they make dragons out of and have them make excretory systems. Let's take what they make camps out of and you know, like random houses and camps out of and have them turn it into a Viking lesson, learning about the Vikings and their and their escapades in history or the Romans. Um, and so these are just some of the ways that redstone can impact. So remember, very, very basic input, redstone is the process, output, and there's a whole series of those things in there. And that and that's your there's your basic model. Let me just take this one away because that was just a mess. There, your basic model. And then if we cross, we can do any and all or two or none or whatever. So that becomes 
your redstone lesson. So I think I'm going to finish there because we've done the basics. We've done a couple of lessons. We've showed you in the beginning the big complex stuff that you can do, taking you that, you know, the furthest journey is like, well, how do we show concepts of things like re um, uh, renewable energy? But we've also done a little science as well showing you just how impactful redstone can be. I know there's a lot still to learn. If you're a beginner and you're looking at this thinking, yeah, but what are the redstone blocks? Why would I not just use redstone? What are the rails? Why do some rails go around corners and some not? What's the difference between power rails? I get that. So what I'm going to do is in the chat, uh, I'm going to stop for questions and I'm just going to, because I've got five, five or so minutes before I have to prepare for my next one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, Stop sharing, if I can, oh, I'm on the wrong page. Where are we? That's because I'm, yeah, there we are. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm just gonna to jump to questions. What's the best things you've ever built that uses redstone? Neil, probably, um, probably the, the toy box that I showed you at the beginning. We've, in that toy box, which I didn't show all of, we've got hydropower, we have the wind, uh, sorry, we have the tidal power that I sort of hinted at, and it's really, really complex inside. It's really interesting. It's basically a battery that charges and decharges depending on how much wave power there is. We've also got wave, uh, sorry, wind power. So we have wind turbines and a wind field. We have solar power and a big solar field. And we also have um, biomass, where we literally have the children chop down trees and then use those trees for biomass, which then links to sustainable forestry, because if they chop down the trees and don't replant the saplings, they soon run out of trees. So we talk about sustainable forestry management and as part of that. And so that whole toy box curriculum, which will be available actually very soon for educators for free, I'm still finishing some bits and pieces, but it basically encompasses a whole um, renewable energy unit over a period of a whole school term. It was a Easter to summer term. And the students just loved it. They were on Minecraft for about 45 minutes a day, every day. And when they came out the other side of it, they understood fully the, um, the concepts of the idea of turning turbines, which ultimately, let's face it, that's what even, even biomass is still generating heat to create steam to turn a turbine. And so all of it's the same concept, but we're showing the clean ways of doing it. Um, and we did it all through Minecraft and Lego. We didn't, we didn't use any other sources, just Minecraft and Lego and some research on the internet. Um, a full unit of work. Uh, any other thoughts? George, uh, George says, I'm trying to get my bosses to allow us to use Minecraft as part of our distance learning in two sentences. What would you tell them? Uh, <laughs> George. What a question. I don't, I'm not a man of two sentences. Um, let's put, let's say in two sentences, I would say, here's the truth. And this is coming from someone in Microsoft. It's one of our truths. Students couldn't care less whether you're using Teams. They don't care whether you're using OneNote. You do, your principals do, your IT managers do, um, but, but your kids don't. They'll, they'll use what you tell them to use. There's certain things they like, but you know what? See, to be honest, they'd rather be on Discord or Snapchat or something. And so they don't really care what it is that you're using, except Minecraft. You tell them you're using Minecraft, you've got them. You can make Minecraft into anything you want. And you're like, we do maths. We do the seven times table. We do, children love it. So the truth is, the stakeholders in your classroom, the true stakeholders in our education system, our, our, our absolute audience are our children. And this is the tool that allows us to meet them precisely where they are and where they need to be and where they can and where they can, they can show us what they've learned. So it wasn't really two sentences, but that, that's where I would go with that. This is the one technology that your children will thank you for deploying and if you manage it properly, believe me, you will get the assessment uh, results that you need, the attainment you'll get. I mean, we've even proved in schools worldwide about attendance. We do Minecraft projects in South Africa where kids don't turn up because they don't have to or they don't, you know, they have to walk to school and it's miles or whatever. 100% attendance for months because we're doing a Minecraft project. 
like there's there's no question about it so yeah um and absolutely i've actually just written a piece this morning about that elizabeth in, uh, students become the creators not the consumers and it's absolutely key that we teach that we must 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 start to think about students as creators solving the problems of tomorrow i was speaking to some students a while ago i said this on my last q stream as well i was spoke, speaking to some students earlier this month and one of the students said to me, what advice would you give me after I leave school? You know, largely. And people were saying, oh, you know, go to university, get a job, da, 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 da. And my advice to her was, be part of a generation of people that saved the whales. Find a way to save the whales. Find a way to save the forests. Find a way to save the air that we breathe. Do something that matters with the stuff that's, that you, you, the, you, you, you've, you're capable of learning. Don't be the generation that, that killed the last black rhino, because that's what we did. We killed the last rhino. I think it was a white rhino, actually. We killed the, white, the last white rhino and, and countless other species. Be the, be the engineers of this world that turn that round. Be the thinkers and the philosophers and the engineers and the mathematicians that, that turn that round. And she loved it. And she, and she said to me, do you, do you think I could? And I said, I think you all can. We just need to teach you how to think that way. That's our failing. And she went off all happy with herself. She was like, I can, do, I, I, so I could just do anything, right? You can do anything. Run a business, join Microsoft, start a charity, do, make a maker space, do something that makes a difference. Um, and and that, I, I'm passionate about that. I genuinely believe that. It's, not, it's got nothing to do with the technologies. Um, good. Uh, I am glad that we got to this stage. So hopefully that has helped you to um, at least see what Minecraft is all about. So I'm going to put in a little thing down here. I run two live streams, which I want you to keep an eye on. They're both on Twitch. Um, and one is my personal one and one is my business one with Microsoft. I'd like to, you to, to, to join the Microsoft one. We do a Minecraft Monday every uh, every single Monday is Minecraft Monday, as well as lots of other things in between. And so I'd like to uh, get you over there. In fact, I have one coming up um, tonight at eight o'clock, which is why I have to leave because I've got another one coming up. But Twitch, uh, let me just get this right. So HTTPS colon forward slash twitch.tv forward slash MSFT engage edu. If you can, Minecraft Mondays, Neil, are, um, Minecraft Mondays are at eight o'clock BST in the evening because we're trying to capture most of the world. So we're able to capture the early birds, very early birds in Australia. We're trying to capture the, um, the Seattleites who are, I think they're, what would they be, eight o'clock in the evening? That's 12 o'clock noon for them. So we're trying to catch as many people as possible. So do join us um, at the And in my other one, http colon forward slash forward slash, and then it's twitch.tv forward slash play matters. And that is all about games-based learning, just games-based learning. Um, I play Minecraft, I play uh, a whole bunch of games, Little Big Planet, all sorts. So if you're into games-based learning, uh, please come along and see me there. The other thing is please follow us on, um, Twitter for much, much more, because these Q ones will end. I've only got a few of them to do. So follow us on Twitter as well at my uh, MSFT Engage EDU. Yeah, absolutely, Elizabeth. That's There's some great stuff in there. Um, so that brings to an end my session. Thank you so, so much for joining me uh, wherever you are in the world. You're all amazing. Um, everything we do, we do because you're doing what you're doing in the first place. And so and oh, Afonso, great to have you in again. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, I look forward to connecting with you in our other uh, in our other environments like the Microsoft EDU Engage. I will see you there in 10 minutes. <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.